You can find the M1 iMac Renew Premium off of Amazon for $900 for the 4 USB-C port version, and it makes me wonder, now that this computer is a few years old and we have the new M3 iMacs out, which you can find the 4 USB-C port version of that for $1,400 off of Amazon, it makes me wonder, is it worth the extra $500 to go from this to the M3 iMac and also to how well does the M1 iMac hold up in 2024? Now, I'm going to get to the comparison between the M1 iMac and the M3 iMac later on in this video, but I want to start off by talking about how this computer holds up now currently. And one thing I feel like this computer does a really good job at of holding up currently with is the design. The design of this is really good and it kind of reminds me of this old like nostalgic feeling that the older iMacs had, like the iMac G3 with the different color options. And I wasn't really alive then, or I guess I was really young then. I don't really know when it came out. But basically, I did grow up with iMacs probably since like 2010. I started out with the iMac, like the 2006 Intel iMac, like one of the first Intel iMacs. And I play Minecraft on it and it'd be really slow and run really bad. But then over the years, I'd upgrade to a 2011 iMac, a 2013 iMac, a 2014 5K iMac, and then finally this iMac right here. And then take a look at the BIOS computer. It has this really nice modern look to it. And it also has a slim profile too that is made by having the power adapter be external from the computer. So that giant cable you see there, that's how it gives this computer power is through that power adapter. Now this I actually found kind of frustrating because at times I'll plug this in, I'll press the power button and I'll have to wait like 30 seconds for it to actually like recognize it's getting a current and turn on. So I don't know why that's that way and I hopefully think they fixed it at the M3 IMAX. Also too, on the back here, you have four USB-C ports or two USB-C ports with the Sencore GP model. And then one final thing to the design, and this is actually kind of a downside in my opinion. The stand here is only tilt adjustable. It's not height adjustable for some reason. So you kind of have to look at this. I'm sitting here. You almost have to look at this like it's a giant laptop. So you have to tilt it if you're a bit higher up. And if you're a bit lower down, you have to like kind of tilt it down. And that's really frustrating because I kind of like to look at it kind of straight on like this and I can't raise it. I have to get a monitor riser in order to do that. But not only does this iMac bring a nostalgic feeling to it, it looks pretty good pretty much anywhere you might have it. Whether it be an apartment, a kitchen, or even at like a front desk, this computer looks really good and it stands out compared to a lot of other desktop computers out there. They even went for the effort of including a color matching keyboard and mouse that comes with a color matching braided USB-C to lightning cable. And this keyboard is pretty cool. It feels comfortable to type on, but also there's an option to get it with Touch ID. And I know the four USB-C port version comes with Touch ID standard. There's also an option too to get a numeric keyboard so you can have numbers and stuff. And then there is the magic mouse when there's an option too for it to come with the magic trackpad. Most of the time you're gonna see it coming with the magic mouse, which to be 100% honest here, I don't really find the Magic Mouse enjoyable to use. I use my own Bluetooth mouse that's not an Apple one. So Apple made two versions of this iMac and the first one, the two USB-C port version, has a eight core CPU and a seven core GPU and then the four USB-C port one comes standard with an eight core CPU and eight core GPU. And then there's some also some other differences too between the two models and I'll put that a chart up on screen for you to see those differences. But with that extra money, I think it's worth getting the four USB-C port one. But if you're just using this as a computer that you don't think you're gonna really connect much to it, the two USB-C port one is just fine. Now, this wouldn't be a 2024 review without talking about performance and Mac OS Sonoma still runs great on this thing. Web pages load almost instantly, loading apps loads almost instantly. And every other performance task I do on this has no slowdowns whatsoever. And even for house performance, I believe this computer is a little overkill for that. Realistically, it could get by with a 2017 4K iMac. However, the M1 chip and how good the design of this computer looks, I think makes it a worthy buy in my opinion. Especially considering a lot of people will hold on to these iMacs for years. And if it's a good looking computer too, that's going to sit at your desk or in your kitchen, wherever you put in your house. I honestly think it's worth it in the long run to buy this. Now, this wouldn't be a iMac test without playing a childhood classic, Minecraft. So I have Minecraft boot up on here, and by the way, the new launcher looks absolutely sick. But anyways, I'm going to go load in a world here. 
and I'm just gonna see how it performs on this computer, and I think this is gonna perform pretty well. So it looks like I'm getting flying around about 42 frames per second. A uh, quick update video. So the reason why I was getting a really low frame rate was actually because I had OBS running in the background. So as you can see here, without OBS running, just Minecraft running, I'm getting almost 70 frames per second, around 60, 70 frames per second. And this is in full screen, so it's displaying the full display resolution of the computer. And if I go put it in window mode, I am gonna get a higher frame rate here too. Because another thing it's trying to do is it's trying to display all the pixels of the screen and that affects performance a lot. So like when I put it in window mode, I'm getting like 100 plus frames per second with vanilla Minecraft. So this isn't with an optimizer mod like Fabric, if you have Fabric installed or another Minecraft optimizing mod, you're getting a much higher one. But yeah, frame rate on this is definitely really good. And then moving on to professional performance, professional performance on this thing is really good. And even though it only has eight gigabytes of RAM standard, I'm able to run Final Cut Pro, Adobe Photoshop, and all these Chrome tabs open at the same time. And I haven't noticed any slowdowns whatsoever with it. But one thing that I think is kind of limiting with this and is frustrating with this is that this iMac only comes with 256 gigabytes of storage. And it's not upgradable later on, which is really frustrating. And as you can see, me, someone who likes to do a lot of video editing and work with large projects, needs to buy a two terabyte external SSD to boot off of, which I will leave a link down in the description on how to do that. But that is something that is really frustrating in my opinion. I really wish Apple could just make the storage upgradable on this after purchase so you don't have to worry about that stuff. One thing this computer doesn't disappoint with though is the display. It has a 24 inch 4.5K display that honestly, in my opinion, looks really good. And even though it is a downgrade from the 27 inch 5K IMAX, the screen still feels big enough and the 4.5K display still is a lot higher resolution than I'd say my 4K LG monitor. It also has up to 500 nits of peak brightness and P3 wide color gamut, which makes it a great video and photo editing device. However, one thing that is really frustrating with this though, is if you want to use this as an external monitor where you can plug in your laptop in it, Unfortunately, software locks Apple has in place prevents you from doing that. And it honestly, it's kind of sad because I really wish I could just plug my MacBook in this and use it as a monitor because this computer screen looks so good. Performance too on this computer is also really good. I'm able to do video editing and I haven't had any slowdowns whatsoever with it. And things still export really quickly. And performance on this too, even though the M1 chip is a little bit older, it's still like a really, really amazing chip. So you're not gonna have any issues whatsoever with professional work. However, on the M3, I know you do get a little bit more extra performance, and I'll get into that in a moment. But probably what's the most limiting factor on here, I'd actually say is RAM. And I have Final Cut Pro open now, I have four Chrome tabs open, and I also have Notion open and Activity Monitor. And currently I'm using up 6.22 gigabytes of RAM. Now, honestly, as I open up more stuff, it kind of pushes up higher and higher, and that's where you might start to see slowdowns because it's trying to, you know, save RAM. So maybe if you are doing this professionally, the more RAM, the better, or possibly considering an M3. But overall, performance in this is absolutely amazing. And then getting into that comparison between the M1 iMac and the M3 iMac, you do get some spec upgrades here, but not much has really changed. And I have a list here of all the changes that happened. So performance wise, you do get an upgraded 10 core GPU. You have the ability to upgrade to 24 gigabytes of RAM at purchase, and it has Wi-Fi 6E instead of Wi-Fi 6. And finally, it has Bluetooth 5.3 instead of Bluetooth 5. So again, it's just a minor spec upgrade, but you have to really think about, is it worth it for you for that extra $500? Some other improvements too is it has advanced support for high impedance headphones and more video encoding engines. So maybe with those more professional tasks, it might be worth it to get the M3 iMac. But as you can see, there's not a lot of differences and the M1 iMac still performs very well. But you have to really ask yourself, is the extra performance you're gonna be getting from the M3 iMac worth the extra $500? And in my opinion, for the vast majority of people, no. However, if you do think you need more storage or more RAM and you can't find these on the used market, you may be screwed and you might have to go that route. But I will put some Geekbench scores up on screen and as you can see, the M3 iMac does get quite a big performance upgrade from the M1, 
but don't let that deceive you. The M1 is still a much powerful chip for what you're seeing out here in the market currently. Now, where can you buy these iMacs? Well, the first place you can buy this is off of Amazon. I do have affiliate links that if you click down below and then purchase anything after clicking those affiliate links, I do get a small percentage of that purchase. But anyways, you can find the four USB-C port model of this for $900. And the two USB-C port one, I saw listings for it for around 750. However, I wanna make sure I find a good listing there, so I will put a link down below if I can find one. Another great place to, too, to buy these is Facebook Marketplace. And what's nice about Facebook Marketplace is you don't have to pay sales tax if you're buying it locally. However, it is a lot more work. You do have to fill around with text to the seller and go drive to meet people. But I was able to pick up the four USB-C port green M1 iMac that you see in my videos here for only $800, which is a really good deal. But do be careful though, because this is one of the most scammed iMacs out there. So be sure to watch my iMac testing guide before you go out there and buy one. One final place you can check out too is the Apple refurbished store. And you can find the two USB-C port model for $1,050 and the four USB-C port model for $1,230, which honestly, in my opinion, seems kind of high. So I'd recommend checking out the first two options before you go out and go that route. However, if you do want higher end specs, that may be the route to go. And also too, like you're gaining an Apple-like experience with that. But anyways, I hope this video was helpful and gave you an idea of how the M1 iMac performs in 2024. I will go put links down below as to where you can buy these, as well as the videos I mentioned with the testing guide and also what you can do to boot off your external hard drive here. But anyways, thank you all for watching and goodbye.